I created a how to control slugs video a couple of years back and it had some really useful feedback. I've tried a few more methods since so I thought I'd share them and give that video a little update. This is how to control slugs and snails volume 2. Slugs and snails are my main adversary in the garden. I don't really have many other pests but slugs and snails if left uncontrolled will eat everything. I've tried a few more methods now and I hope the following advice will help you if you have a similar problem to me. I'd like to state early that this is just what has worked and what hasn't worked for me. You may have different results. I've grouped the methods I've tried into three categories. I'll start with deterrence. In my first video I showed how to mix a garlic spray which you can apply to plants, which slugs and snails don't like, and it should keep them away. This was a little hit and miss, and by the time you start applying the spray the damage has already been done. A small seedling can be completely eaten in one evening, so it only really works on established plants, and even then I couldn't completely trust it. I also tried a mulch which contains a slug deterrent, and I spread this around the plants I wanted to protect. This also was not effective. I found that using a mulch gives pests a home close to your plants, so you're essentially making their commute quicker. I've found deterrence not to be an effective method of preventing slug and snail damage. The next group of methods are barriers. Here I've had much more success. Depending on where you live, feel free to use my tried and tested yeet them over the fence tactic. Go out at night, ideally after it's rained, with a torch and collect them up. Toss them over the fence, but not into your neighbour's property. Some may come back, but many won't, and you'll reduce their numbers over time. For a few years now, my neighbour thought I, as a grown man, was throwing stones late at night for no reason, until I explained what was going on. The next one's a specific one, so I won't spend much time on it, but I've found that raising plants off of the ground, for example in hydroponics, does make it a little more difficult for slugs and snails to get to them. Generally, they don't have any problem getting into your pots or raised beds, though. The last barrier method I've used are plastic collars. You sink one a little into the ground and sow or transplant your seedlings into the centre. The shape of the collar makes it very difficult for slugs and snails to get in. They have trouble getting past the rim here. They work very well on single, larger plants, and it also helps with watering. They are a little fragile, though, and they don't work on rows of seedlings. I found some metal ones online which I think will be a great investment for next year, and they should last a long time. The last group contains the more destructive methods for when you've been pushed to your limit. I've used a few types of beer trap, and these certainly look like they work. You fill them up with beer, which is enticing to slugs, and in the morning you're greeted to a pot or a bag full of dead slugs, which have gorged themselves and fallen in drunk. These can then be disposed of. From an instant effect point of view, they seem to work. You can place or bury them in key locations, and I've found that it reduces damage to nearby plants. However, keeping them topped up with beer could be a little pricey, and after a little more research, it could be that beer traps actually encourage more slugs into your garden, as the smell can be picked up from quite a distance. They also don't seem to work on snails. It may be a good one to try at least, as you don't need much to get started. A simple trap could be made by any leftover liquid container. The last method came from a helpful comment on the previous video, pointing me towards a couple of brands of organic slug pellet. I've resisted for a long time, as I didn't want to risk harming birds or other animals in the garden, and I don't want to poison the ground where I grow food. There are quite a few good brands though that are not harmful to other animals, and can be used around fruit and veg. Simply sprinkle them evenly over the surface of the area you want to protect. The slug and snail populations do decrease after they eat the pellets. They do need to be refreshed after heavy rain, but some brands add nutrients to the soil, so it's not wasted at least. I've had very good results with these so far, but it doesn't seem to work well on areas that are mulched. So, as a summary, if you've got only a few slugs and snails in your garden, try hunting them down after dark and moving them away from your garden. If you're protecting single larger plants, the collars work very well. If you've got a larger area to defend, use an organic slug and snail pellet to protect that space. Mulching and beer traps could be encouraging more pests to your growing area. 
You can also apply nematodes to your garden, which is a natural parasite to slugs and snails. But I can't offer any advice on this as I've not given it a go yet. I may try next year, and if I do I'll be sure to review it properly. It's very disheartening to have your work undone by slugs and snails, but hopefully this video has armed you with a few effective solutions. If you've got any tips for controlling pests in your garden or allotment, please pop them in the comments so we can all learn and grow together. Thank you to my patrons for their support, and for everyone who commented on the previous video. Here are a couple of videos which you may be interested in. Thank you for your time, and happy growing!